everybody. God is so good. And truly the Lord's mercy, I tell you, hallelujah, it endures until the end. I want to begin a new series entitled, Is Anything Too Hard for God? Coming from the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter, and I want to read in your hearing the passage of scripture that we're going to wrap this um, series around. The Bible says in the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter, beginning at verse 26, now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, the house of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. Verse Verse 33 says, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom there and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Verse 36 God. says, Now indeed Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. I'll say it again, our anchor text, for with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, behold, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Again, I've taken for a subject matter. Is anything too hard for God. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for all that you have done. Thank you for your great mercy and your great grace. Thank you that we could say with assurance that with God, all things are possible. Thank you that you have never left us nor forsaken us and you have never lost a battle. So Father, I pray in the name of Jesus as we begin this series that you would open up our understanding so we could comprehend your word, Lord God. We could understand what you were saying to Mary and apply it to our life. We thank you for your only begotten son, Jesus, who paid the price for our sins, giving us an entrance into the Holy of Holies where we can cry out, Abba, Father. We love you today, Father. And I thank you for this opportunity to minister to your people. Now, Father, I pray that your people will be edified and you, my Lord, would be glorified. In the matchless name of Jesus, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of mine heart. Father, let it be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Again, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. As we begin this series, I just want you to keep in your mind as we go over all of these scriptures and as we study the word of God that nothing is impossible with God. I don't care what you face, when you face it, how you face it. If you put your trust in God, no matter the outcome, all will be well because we serve a God, hallelujah, that cannot fail. We serve a God that has never lost a battle. We serve a God that has purpose and a plan and strategies. He doesn't, nothing surprises God. Nothing creeps up on God, hallelujah. So anything that comes into our life, you know, the providence of God, hallelujah, that lets us know that God is in control. And I love the Bible. I love how God 
God has placed people and situations in the Bible that let us know that all is well, that let us know that he is able to keep us. He is able to perform all things in our life. And when I think about the Bible and everything that I have learned from the Bible, there are just certain people in the Bible that just bring me great joy. The whole Bible is good. Hallelujah. But there are certain uh, people in the Bible that I zoom in on. And I'm sure you have your favorites in the Bible. The first one that I want to talk about is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And all that he has taught me through his life. When you read the New Testament, all of the lessons that we learned from Jesus, he taught us to love our enemies. He taught us to be quiet sometimes, you know, and speak at the right moment. He taught us to live our life to please the Father. These are people in the Bible that have made impact on my life. And I'm talking about Jesus right now. He also taught us to surrender our life to the Father. Hallelujah. Let his will be done. Didn't Jesus say it in the Garden of Gethsemane? Not my will, but let your will be done. Oh, it's a maturity that comes when you get to that level in your life where you're able to just surrender your life to God and say, God, whatever it be, I know my life is in your hands and I know all is well. Jesus taught us to be strong and courageous. It took strength. Hallelujah. It took courage for him to surrender his life, you know, to those Roman soldiers. Jesus could have called the angels and could have, you know, wiped them all out. But Jesus, because of the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross because he knew that one day I'd be sitting here. He knew that one day you'd be listening in and in your positions at your churches. Hallelujah. So Jesus taught us to be strong and courageous. And he taught us most of all not to complain. Hallelujah. He didn't complain when they um, did all that they did to him. Hallelujah. You know what he said? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Oh, it's maturity when you get to that point to where you can love in spite of what's going on around you. And you know what? I could go on and on talking about our Lord and Savior Jesus. Hallelujah. My number one hero. But you know, he's the reason why if I think about it, Jesus is the reason why I live. He's the reason why I breathe. I move. I I have my being. If it wasn't for Jesus, I would not be here. Hallelujah. He became my mother, my father, my sister, my brother, my lawyer, my doctor, my teacher, my preacher, my bishop. Hallelujah. He became God Almighty. Hey, glory. He became God Almighty to me and he showed himself strong. When I was left for dead, Jesus came right on in. Hallelujah. He began to speak purpose into my life. He began to speak destiny into my life. He began to show me that he had a purpose and a plan for my life and he is the reason why I sit here and I'll sit here until he say otherwise hallelujah because God is in control the next person that made an impact on my life that showed me that nothing is impossible with God now I won't spend too much time elaborating on David but what David taught me in the scriptures is that you can make a mess but if you repent hallelujah God will still use you. Hallelujah. David taught me also to be about the father's business. He was in the shepherd field, tended to his father's sheep and what the prophet came and called him out, the prophet Samuel and God anointed him to be the next king. David taught me that you can go through adversity. Saul was trying to kill him. Saul chased him. He was hiding in caves, but God, if he's given you a word, David taught us this. If God has given you a word, it shall come to pass. I don't care what the devil do. I don't care where you have to run, hide, you know, for the moment. God will bring it to pass, which brings me to my text today. Hallelujah. The text that we're going to anchor our series on in the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter. Hallelujah. I want you to know that we are in a spiritual battle, whether you know it or not. Hallelujah. I pray that you have been awakened by the Spirit of God to know that we are in a battle. And the devil, you know, Satan, he wants to take over. But however, you know what? I want you to know that the devil has a problem. His problem is God's children on this earth. As long as we are here, the devil cannot Rule, rule over Satan can't us. rule over us because we 
are God's children. Hallelujah. So let's take a few weeks and revisit this greatest story that has ever been told. Hallelujah. The miraculous birth of the Messiah, the Savior. Hallelujah. Some might say Redeemer. Hallelujah. Some might say Emmanuel, God with us. Some might call him the lily of the hey, glory of the valley. Some might say bright and the morning star. Some might say lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. Some might say son of man, son of God. Hallelujah. The wheel in the middle of the wheel. Uh, some might just simply call him Jesus. Glory. I call him Jesus. Hallelujah. For he is my savior, the anointed one, the Christ. Hallelujah. The, the one that God sent his only begotten son. And because of Jesus, hallelujah, because of his birth, he changed his whole world. Hallelujah. And then I talk about our, my third favorite. So first I talked about our Lord and Savior Jesus. I talked about David. Now Mary. Hallelujah. As we get into this series as, I, series, as I lay a foundation. And all of them are mentioned in the text that I just read. Hallelujah. Mary, she um, inspired me for being a woman that God would honor that way. Oh, what an honor it was to be chosen to carry uh, the Savior in her womb, to bear, to give birth to Jesus. Hallelujah. Mary must have been strong for God to choose her. She must have been loving. She must have been obedient. She must have been trustworthy. And she must have been full of faith. Oh, it took faith to do what she had to do, to be able to birth the Savior into the world, knowing that she was not married, knowing all of the obstacles that she would have had to have faith, uh, faced, God chose this woman. Hallelujah. And we thank God for Mary. We don't worship her, but we thank God for her, this mighty woman of God. So what I'd like to do, hallelujah, as we begin this series, let's look at Elizabeth. Let's look at Mary. Let's look at Jesus. And even we might look back at David, hallelujah, since he's mentioned as well. And then the um, the angel Gabriel forgot to send that messenger to Mary. We're going to look at that as well. And I believe our faith will increase and our focus will shift because right now our focus is on a lot. There's a lot going on in the world. There's a lot happening in the world. But I believe God is saying through this series, I believe that he's saying, hallelujah, to look Verse 26 says, Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Gabriel was one of the angel princes. He was one that was like a chief of the angels. He was one of the archangels. And how important it tells you that this announcement was that the Messiah was going to come. Hallelujah. And to the woman, Mary, this young girl that was obligated already to Joseph, but God saw fit to favor her. Her name means exalted one. God saw fit to exalt Mary to this great miracle that was going to take place because it was going to take a miraculous birth for Mary to give birth to our Lord and Savior Jesus being a virgin. And oh, how great this thing was that God had planned. He waited until the sixth month of Elizabeth, her cousin, uh, Mary's cousin, Elizabeth. God waited until the sixth month of her pregnancy with John the Baptist to let Mary know that God is a God that can do the impossible. God can take a situation that looks hopeless. God can take a situation where no one else can figure it out and God can show forth his glory and that's what he did in the life of Mary he showed forth his glory whereas the Holy Spirit and I'm getting a little ahead of myself because we're going to get to Mary's um, story but the 
Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary and hallelujah. And then Jesus was in the womb of Mary and Mary, this exalted one was chosen by God to bring forth the Savior. Yes, again, it was going to take a miracle because it would was going to have to be a miraculous birth. But hallelujah, as this series says, is there anything too hard for God? God can do all things. Hallelujah. He could send his only begotten son like he did Jesus into the world. Hallelujah. To bear the sins of the world. So the question today to you, do you believe? Do you believe? in Jesus? Uh, do you believe that he was the son of God? Uh, do you believe that he is the Messiah? Do you believe that he died and rose again? Hallelujah. To take away our sins. Do you believe the Bible even when God told David that his house would never end? This is why it's saying of the house of David. Hallelujah. Do you know that our God is precise? Do you know that our God, everything that he says it comes to pass. Do you know that one day, just as the Bible declares, Jesus is coming back. The question is, will you be ready? And do you know Jesus? And if you know him, what are you doing with Jesus in your life? Verse 28 Close declares, One of my videos without giving someone the opportunity to give their life to the Lord. You know, in the days and the hours and the time that we are living in now, it demands that you know who you are, who you belong to and where you are going. And so I want to give you the opportunity to give your life to the Lord. If you have not heard the story, the Bible declares that we were all born sinners. It says over in the book of Romans, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that transpired back in the book of Genesis where Adam disobeyed God. And because of Adam's disobedience, sin and death entered into the world. And so Jesus, who was was God's sacrificial lamb because a price had to be paid for the sins of the world. So God sent in John 3 16, he says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that's what I want to give you the opportunity to do today, to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, to wash away all of your your sins. Romans 10 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. Romans 10 13 says, if you call on the name of the Lord, he will save you. So just repeat this prayer after me. Also, if you have walked away from the Lord, come on back home. Just say, Lord, I confess that I am a sinner. I'm sorry for the wrong that I have done. Please forgive me. I invite you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I denounce Satan. I declare that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. And now that I am your child, please fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you have said that prayer, God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. Know today all of heaven is rejoicing because you have chosen to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. Welcome again to the family of God.